Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to talk about the skew chisel. A lot of you have made a lot of comments on the skew chisel and my use of it and how did I learn to use a skew and different questions about the skew. So I'm going to try to answer a few of those. I am not an expert on the skew. I will share with you what I know and I will share with you how I learned to use the skew. It is a valuable tool and I thoroughly enjoy using it. And some of you are going, no, <laughs> because there's two ways of thinking of a skew. One of them, it's in your shop so you can open uh, the cans of finish. The other is it's a valuable tool and has many uses in the wood turning shop. So we're gonna kinda go over some of those uses and hopefully take away a little bit of the fear of the skew. Join me and let's go ahead and get started. This is a uh, wood river. I'm not saying anything good or bad about it, other than it is a Wood River skew, and so I'm identifying it for you. It has an oval shape to it, but look how thin it is. Not very thick at all. It's probably in the middle. It's not even a quarter of an inch thick. This skew I will sometimes use on very soft woods, uh, taking light cut. If you try to take a very big cut with a skew like this on hardwood, it's gonna start vibrating and bouncing on you. This is what I started out with. It took a while to figure this one out. About the time I got this one figured out, I bought one of these. This is a Stuart Batty skew. You see how thick and heavy that is? You can do some cuts with this tool without worrying about it jumping and vibrating on you. That's gonna make learning the skew a whole lot easier. So just a heads up, if you've got a real thin skew, it's gonna be harder to learn. If you got one that's thick and heavy, it's gonna make your learning curve a little bit easier. Now skews come about as small as you want them. That's a quarter inch. And I can tell you, using that little booger, you have a very, very small sweet spot. This is a half inch. I use this one a lot on pins. Now this is one of the Stuart Batty half inch skews. Let's just put that side by side. You notice the difference in thickness? Quite a bit. This one's a whole lot easier to use. And this one with its short handle, it works good on pin blanks. This is the three that I use most often. They're all Stuart Batty's. Uh, it's a half, a three quarter, and a one inch. Of those, I use this one inch a whole lot more than I use any of the others. Now here's one, and you can probably tell by looking at the edge that this doesn't get much use. But this is a 5 8 inch bar that was ground to a skew. I got it when I bought the lathe, and this thing weighs about 10 pounds. This is a solid steel handle and a solid steel bar. You could probably jack up a car with this thing, but it's not my favorite skew. Even though it's heavy duty, and you're not going to make it vibrate, well, not easily anyway. Still, it's just heavier than I like to work with. Now let's talk about the angles. This one on mine, and I, I do these three, uh, the three Stuart Batty skews, I grind to the same, same angle, and we're looking at about 30 degrees. When I started looking up angles of skews, I heard everything from 80 degrees to 25. That softer woods work better with the 25 or 30. Harder woods are going to work better on the higher end. I think Alan Batty said he preferred 40. Alan Lancer says that he likes uh, one and a half times the thickness to be the bevel, and that'll give you the correct angle. Guys, I'm not here to tell you what angle to use. I can tell you the only way to find the angle that's going to work for you is to sharpen your skew and work with it. And if you don't like that angle, make it a little steeper or a little less steep and work until you find one that works for you. I can tell you I like that longer uh, bevel angle. I'm sure a lot of you are going, oh no Dean, you, that's way too much. It works for me. What do I use a skew for and how did I learn to use a skew? Let me show you th something here. First of all, in this uh, between centers here, we've got a piece of wood that's, uh, to say this thing's been sitting around and dry is uh, no joke. And we're gonna take and we're gonna use this skew on it. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna catch that bark and we're gonna peel that off. Why do I do that? Because I don't want it flying up in my face. Just one way 
to remove that bark and stay safe. Because not that I know from experience, but I heard that if that bark flies off of there and hits you, that it can hurt. So what we're gonna do is first thing, we're gonna make this round. We're learning today, so we're gonna use a roughing gouge to get it round. Now that we've got this pretty much round, we're gonna go ahead and mount it in the chuck. There's one thing I always do before I take a spindle and put it in the chuck. I will come in just like so, and I will face off that end. I will come back all quarter three eighths of an inch, and I will make me a cut. Then I'll come in and just do a peeling cut, and let's see about what size we need this. Okay, so we'll take about another eighth of an inch off of that. Okay, now that we've made this cut and we have a tenon on this, we can take it loose, put it in our chuck. Like I said earlier, this piece of wood is dry as a bone. It's got bug holes in it, maybe a little bit of spalting, maybe a few cracks, but it's not something I'm gonna use. So why is it in my lathe? If it's been any time at all since I've turned anything and I've worked with the skew, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna put this piece of timber or one very similar to it in the lathe. And we're just gonna make some cuts. You know, the Olympics are on right now for you guys watching later. That may not be so, but for right now, as I'm uh, filming this, the Olympics are on. You think how much those athletes practice, how much do baseball, football players practice, or golfers. Just about anything that folks do, they practice. So why should we think that we can just walk out into our shops, hadn't been out there in days, weeks, or sometimes months, pick up this trusty skew and be an expert on it? Maybe you can, I can. The first cut I showed you, let's go ahead and go over that again. We'll face that off, and if you don't have any other cut besides that one, that is, to me, invaluable. Again, we're gonna start off, we're gonna line this up going 90 degrees across the face of that. So this bevel is shooting straight across. If you do this, you're gonna end up with a cone shape. It's gonna cut in the uh, angle of that bevel. Let me just show you. So we'll go straight in, straight in, and straight in. And one more time, straight in. So you see what we've got there. Again, when you straighten that out, You're squared off there. Now to cut your tenon, I come back. It's not necessarily a V cut, but I'm just coming in making a stop cut more or less. And then we'll do a peeling cut. With a peeling cut, all you do is you rub your bevel and then you pull it back till it starts to cut. You then lift the back of the handle and push it in. Great way to waste away wood in a hurry. So if you've got something you need to bring down, you can bring it down in a hurry. Now, what are we doing here? When we're coming across here doing a planing cut, we can cut with the back of this. We can cut up to almost halfway up. Once you get past about halfway up, you're gonna start, this tip's gonna start to grab and it's gonna dig in. So let's look at it. See, as we cut on the back of that angle, see, it's, it's just cutting that real great. As we roll it over, we're cutting up to halfway and maybe just slightly past. It's cutting just fine. The minute we get over and that tip catches, it digs in and that's when you're gonna get that big catch. That's what scares most people. It's not that it's that dangerous normally. See, we're cutting down there on the lower end. We're moving up, but as soon as we 
See, it, it'll grab that and pull it. There is nothing you can do to stop it. It's going over. Once it gets up and it catches that, you're not going to stop it. Let's go ahead and speed the lathe up a little bit. We'll flatten that back out. Again, notice where the, the shavings are coming from. Look at the dust on that skew. You see how it's coming across there? We were cutting right below that, and that's your dust pattern. So when you're doing your peeling cut, again, we're going to use the pencil. We're going to put that angle right up underneath there, roughly the, uh, the angle that we sharpen that pencil. And as we come in, you know, see, I'm just, I'm just doing the heel of the, the skew right there. Now let's go ahead and rock up and let's use that middle portion. Now, let me caution you on something. You don't need a whole bunch of pressure down on that skew. That's not what this is about. Let the bevel and the angle determine the cut. Yeah, my hand's on top there. But I'm not forcing that skew down. See, there's no hand there. Everything's being driven by the tail end of that skew. We're holding it here. This is just for support, not necessarily guidance. As long as you're pushing, you're going to do well. If you start trying to pull this thing, you're gonna create problems for yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this section out, get it to where it's not tapered here. The other thing with the skew, these little diamond homes, they are your best friend. Put it on the back part of that bevel. As you start coming up and down, do not let it leave this back part of this bevel here. If you roll this over, you're gonna dull this thing and you're gonna be out there grinding again. So keep it on the back part of that angle. You cannot roll it over. You wanna move your skew? You move your skew. You want to move your stone, move your stone. But again, make sure you are on the back part of that bevel at all times. You can come off the front, but you can't come off the back. Just a tip for honing these things, and if you do that often, you very rarely need to sharpen these. So we're going to do some V-cuts here. All a V-cut is is going straight into the wood. You're basically, you're basically coming in with the point or the toe, raising the back of the skew up, hit it, come over, angle it, come over, angle it. Again, guys, if it's been a while since I've been on the skew, or on the lathe, I will come out and do this. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to come in and practice rolling that over. Now you notice I let the bevel hit. I raise the handle. And I'll tell you what, it's harder to think about this and explain it than it is to do it. So let's talk about this a minute. As I start this, I'm going to come in, I'm going to catch my bevel, I'm going to come up with the back of the handle till I'm cutting, and I'm going to push it over into the wood. As I'm pushing it this way, I'm straightening it up and I'm bringing the handle back. So what does that look like? We're going to come into the wood, we're going to catch the bevel, we're going to start to remove wood, we're going to lift the back of the handle as we rotate this up. Let's see if we can give you a better shot here. Coming in, touching here, we're going to push forward. 
We've got our bevel. As we got our bevel, we're going to pull back a little bit, raise the back. We're cutting. We're going to push and straighten the skew. Let's make one of those cuts here with that view. Bevel, cutting, raise the handle, and straight. Bevel, cutting, raise the handle as we rotate it straight. Once you've learned to do that right-handed, learn to do it left-handed. Now you see a little bit of a point there. In the beginning, don't worry about that. Let me show you why. This is 220 sandpaper. See what I'm talking about? Simply hitting it with just a little bit of 220 for no longer than that, and you're good. So again, we're going to find our bevel, pull it back to our cutting, and swing over. As we're swinging over, we're bringing the tool handle up. Do all the right side, or do all the left side. Practice that move till you get it right. Once you get that one, let's come back and let's do the same with the left side. And if you mess it up, guess what? This is a piece of trash wood. We're gonna throw it away anyway. Come in and practice your peeling cut again. Catch the bevel, bring it back, push it forward. And here we go again. We can practice those once more. Again, we're not going for perfection. See, why did that run on me? Let's talk about that. Okay, it started right there. So we were coming around here as we got in the bottom of that, we didn't stop here. We went just a little bit further and it ran on me. So if you know why you're getting those runs, then you can prevent them in the future. Anytime this skew goes back into the wood, it's gonna catch and go. So if you're cutting this way and you come in, you have to stop at vertical. You cannot go past vertical, not even a half a degree. Best to always stay that half a degree back from vertical, okay? So let's go ahead and clean this up one more time. Again, we're gonna make that planing cut right down through there. Let's do that one more time. Okay, folks, I want us to take a look at this. See that tiny little curl there? Those are shavings. This wood, for all intents and purposes, should be coming off as powder, but we're coming off as shavings. And if you feel that, you can't get that smooth with 220 or 320 paper. It is slick as it can be. Now, folks, I want you guys to look at that. You see how rough that is right there? We're gonna come in, we're gonna make a parting cut right here, okay? Now with a parting cut, if you wanna make it smooth, you raise that handle up, 
come in once you get a cut started then you can raise it up and go straight on in I just want to remind you guys you see how gnarly that is we're gonna do a peeling cut we're just gonna take that right on off of there you see how tore out and stuff that is right there do you think you would ever sand that out my money says nobody watching this would ever sand that out. You would give up before you would get that smooth. Let me show you something. Remember, we're lining the angle up here. We'll go ahead and... So we've got to go back a little ways because remember, even if you were sanding, you'd have to go back a little ways to get all of that out of there. I want you folks to look at that. This is worst case scenario wood, and that is probably 80 to 120 grit sanded right there. You remember how gnarly it looked before. So let's talk about this. We've, t we've talked about the slicing cut. We've talked about the peeling cut. We've talked about how I use them to make tenons to fit in the chuck. We've talked about the planing cut. Remember what I said? You can use that pencil, get your angle, slide it right down that wood. You gotta start your bevel first, back up till you start seeing dust, raise the handle, and push from the back of the chisel, okay? If you're trying to push it down with your fingers up here, it's not gonna work. If you're getting a lot of chatter, look and see how thick is your skew? If you got a real thin skew, you're gonna have to keep it real close, the tool rest real close to the wood and take light cuts and keep it extremely sharp. We talked about the V-cut. We talked about rolling that bead. Again, guys, I'm the first to tell you, I am no expert with the skew. And if I haven't been using it for any time at all, or if I just don't feel comfortable when I start using it, the piece comes off the lathe, a scrap piece goes on, and we practice. I hope this is helping some of you guys. I can tell you that end cut, to me, is one of the most valuable cuts there is. It fixes so many problems, and you know you got it square across the end when you do that. The peeling cut, you can get rid of so much wood so fast. The V cuts and rolling the beads, I don't do a lot of bead, but I practice them. If you want to use a skew for something besides opening a paint can, get it out of the tool rack, put a piece of scrap wood on the lathe, and practice. You are not going to get it the first time out. It may take some time to get to the proficiency that you want to be. But if you never try, <laughs> you'll never get good at it, okay? And if you want some tips from some professionals that actually know what they're doing, watch Alan Batty and Alan Lacer. Fantastic gentlemen, both of them. There's YouTube videos up. You can learn a lot from both of those guys. Folks, if you like what you're seeing, go down, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and give me a thumbs up. I love to see those. Also like to see the comments. Remember, if you like what you're seeing, tell a friend. If you love what you're seeing, tell everybody. Folks, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.